Hi guys, I've got my headphone amplifier here I'm about to put together. So this comes as a kit and I've got all the pieces laid out here. Got my solder. Of course it didn't come with that. I've got my soldering iron and a sponge to clean the tip. Got the instructions that it provides. And of course it also comes with a little clear case that it'll be going in along with the hardware for that. Capacitors, resistors, uh, volume knob, LED, input and output along with the op amps. And these are the, uh, see I'll have to flip it around here. Texas Instruments NE5532P. And we've got two of those along with the um, circuit board uh, mounting blocks. So we'll get started and then afterwards we'll see how it sounds. Okay, when populating the circuit board, you're going to want to actually do the smallest components first. That way when you flip it upside down to solder, there isn't, um, they're not gonna just fall out of the board because something larger on the board is keeping them from being flush. So you start with the resistors more than likely. On this, it does come with a lot of resistors. You can see here, there's uh, two sets of four. They're labeled 4.7K and 47 ohm. Um, there's the three resistors here, which are a 10K, and then two resistors here, which are a 100K. So it's pretty simple, I mean, by process of elimination. I just want to make sure that they gave the right ones. It's almost impossible to see those colors for me anyway. I mean, if you look really close, you, you have the color codes there. Um, I actually just hold the meter to it, as you can see here. And then I read the meter to verify. So these are my 100K resistors. And I'll start with those. I've got one soldered in and I thought I'd show you. To populate the board, you're gonna wanna bend these. That way you could just push them into their holes. Just like that. You see now they're into the hole. And then around the back side, I just bend them out slightly so that they won't just fall back through the hole so that they're tight up against the board as I'm soldering them. And once I've got a little bit of solder in there, I actually just take my flush cutters, uh, get it pretty flush, and cut the leads off just like that. Okay, I've got the op amp, op amp uh, seats or whatever they're called in place there. After all of the resistors, um, it was a little bit hard to, you know, get them in straight. They're a little bit crooked. If you have something to kind of hold everything down, that probably would make it better. So the next thing I think I'm going to be putting on this are the um, input and output jacks. Um, these just kind of sit on the top. And then they're going to be soldered in here um, with the kind of three, three to four points at the side. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, I've got the one in place. And let's see if I could film getting this other one on. And there we go, we're all soldered up on that second one there. All right, as you can see, it's all done, it's all soldered up. Um, now I'm just gonna build the little enclosure that it includes, and then we'll test it out. Everything went well, um, it went a little quicker um, than, I, than I even expected. Um, once you start soldering it on, you get your technique down, 
and everything is good. Um, I cleaned off the backside of the board a little bit with some alcohol, um, but you know, whenever you rub it on there, the little soldering ends, the, the wire ends or whatever you want to call it, the metal starts tearing up your little napkin or cloth or whatever you're using to rub it on. And I didn't want to go through the trouble of using a brush and waiting for it to dry or blow drying it or anything. So I just did a little light cleaning. This isn't really a serious project here. So we'll check it out when it's all enclosed and see how it performs. All right, I've got the bottom piece on here. So I think the easiest way to do it, um, you use the longer of the two lengths of screws, put them into this bottom panel, put the little plastic spacer right in between uh, the board and the bottom panel. And then just kind of push down on the board here while you're hand threading on these brass standoffs. That seems to be the easiest way to do it. And then you've got all this uh, together where it's not gonna fall apart. And then I'll just go ahead and put the sides on it. Okay, you've got the front and back panel here. The front panel um, has a smaller hole. That seems to be where the volume control goes because there isn't any instructions on here. Um, the easiest way to do it is to just put it in here at an angle, the volume control, and then right there. Then after that, you'll be able to put the little nut on the volume pot right there. Hey, since this acrylic can be pretty brittle, I'm just actually holding the bit and hand tightening all these and then going back and tightening the ones at the bottom. That seems to do well because if you over tighten this, it definitely will crack very easily. After you tighten all of the screws, that's when you're going to want to tighten this nut down right here behind the volume control. You don't want to do it beforehand because it'll make everything hard to fit. So you want to keep everything loose on it until you tighten the screws, then tighten that nut last. All right, it's all done, put together. We've got the power supply plugged into it and it's time to check it out. So I've got a little bit of an issue here. After it was all assembled, I powered it up and it's not working. The volume's really, really low. So I'm showing here on the board, I uh, got my meter out, traced everything, and it seems like that when I cut one of the leads off, I'll point it out here. I nicked the circuit board right here. You can see that where it's damaged, that trace. And so I'm not getting continuity from this point over to this point like I should. So from here to here, we're good. And from here to here, we're good. But I think this right here is my problem. So I'll work out a fix for that and I'll try it out. All right, I've scraped back some of the circuit board trace right here, and I'm hoping to just glob a little bit of solder over to jump across where I had damaged it, and we'll see if that fixes things. Okay, I've tested with my meter, and that seems to have done the trick to correct for this, so we'll try it out and see if that fixed my issue. All right, it's fixed. So as you could hear it playing out of the headphones, We'll give you a little bit of a listen to that in a minute once I get it all put together. Alright guys, so everything's sounding pretty good now. We've got it plugged directly into the phone. This is not in use as you can see. Unplug it, light turns off. So this is with the phone volume all the way up. Those are the headphones being used. I'll open the cups and stick the phone in there, and I'll do the same thing when I plug in the amp. And now with the amplifier.
And as you could tell, guys, it's a lot louder with the amplifier. Um, sounds a little better definition on it. Um, you know, I can imagine a little better sound quality. The bass is pretty prominent on this. If you like uh, bass, you know, I think it does a good job. Um, doesn't seem to extend as deep in the bass region as it possibly could, but it does have some punch to it. Um, high frequencies are decent. It doesn't have that transparent audiophile sound quality to it, definitely. But, I mean, you know, we're talking like nothing to buy this thing. And it's a good learning experience is really what it is. It definitely sounds um, like it's got, you know, a whole lot more output versus just plugging it into the phone, that's for sure. So if your phone volume's lacking a little bit and you're into electronics, you know, give this thing a try. It, it doesn't hurt. You assemble it, you know, sit on the computer, play games, whatever. You could be listening to your music a lot, lot louder, um, you know, more enjoyable than just plugging it into the phone directly. So thank you again for watching my video. Um, I'll make one more uh, comment here that I didn't comment on. Um, I actually have this plugged into a 12 volt power supply. It says it ranges between 12 and 18 volts. This is the particular power supply that I'm using. This actually came with um, one of my Kinter amps that I mentioned in another video. So this is a 12 volt, five amp power supply. It's really overkill for what you need on this amplifier, but it's the 12 volt I had laying around here. So I thought I'd just plug that in and test it out. Again, thanks for watching my video. Subscribe, hit the like button, leave comments below, ask me any questions. Thanks again, guys, I appreciate it.